Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Thursday. It is the Earth Master here with an update video on this uh, leap day, February 29th, 2024. It's about 11.31 a.m. here, California time. By the way, the stream is offline. I've had a couple power issues and flickers going on out here. Got a major winter storm coming into the West Coast. So I'm probably going to leave the live stream down most of the day because we have some extreme winds coming in but it will keep the updates going right now definitely watching some earthquake activity off the northern california coastline this kicked in last night i noticed that uh in my update last night we started to see a couple fours out here well this activity has kind of increased here overnight including a 4.9 and a 4.5 out here around the gorda ridges now this area is a plate boundary uh with oceanic divergent zone uh meaning spreading seafloor center happening right about uh, here so to speak along this area now new crust obviously is being uh, formed throughout time uh, let me bring this back over to the usgs map here uh, you can see those ridges out here as the uh, divergent zones kind of separate and uh, keep that uh, crust new oceanic crust going so a decent swarm when when things like this happen uh, makes me open my eyes a little bit here because that could be applying further strain here at the southern end of the cascadia subduction zone now we have seen partial ruptures here uh in between large ruptures the large rupture of course going to be the full length here of the cascadia at a 9.0 uh, historically there's been partial ruptures of just the southern end of around 8.1 to 8.5 i believe uh, so we'll watch that. I'm really not seeing any uh, elevated earthquake activity following this divergent movement that we've seen overnight. But uh, keep an eye here on Southern California because that's a decent amount of earthquake activity. And again, that is in a uh, you know a uh, spreading seafloor center. There's a couple different ones. You got the Juan de Fuca area up here, uh, but the subduction zone itself here, where this strain is applied, uh, is. Um, right here along this plate boundary right here cascadia mega thrust area and it's been 324 years since we've seen any major rupture so we'll keep an eye on northern california that's a decent amount of earthquake activity it looks like the, uh, the largest is a 4.9 uh, coming in defaulted about 10 kilometers deep here this is their defaulted level there uh, whenever they have earthquakes out here in the oceanic crust area again seafloor center uh, spreading center keep an eye here on california looking at the rest of the globe here rest of the model um seen some activity down across the southern portion of the state uh well i wouldn't call this southern portion here this is around the bay area last night of course we had that movement around the discovery bay they revised this earthquake activity to just to the southwest of this area last night this three-pointer was directly underneath the discovery bay area i found that kind of odd but uh looks like that movement there has halted overnight haven't really seen any further activity this morning just off the hayward fault though uh, we got a little earthquake coming in in the last hour it's been somewhat amplified over here uh, in the last few days in terms of earthquake movement so we'll keep an eye on it might be leading to something might not be but uh, either way keep an eye on the bay area as well things do look uh you know quite active across the state of california and just offshore for now i mean for uh for the past week it has been elevated all right uh, extreme southern california here got one earthquake down in the pine valley area that's uh, uh not for sure which fault system that is not on the elsinore but a couple other uh, mountainous fault zones out here it looks like not a big earthquake 1.3 and uh, a little bit of activity across southern cal today in the terms of microquake movement san andreas fault continues to sleep for now up in idaho uh, still seeing a handful of earthquakes here including this morning it looks like 2.5 over here near stanley last night uh, near smith's Fe smith's ferry we've seen uh, some further earthquake activity of course this region has seen you know some decent movement here in the last week or so including a 4.9 earthquake here a few days back so aftershock activity continuing that uh from that 4.9 uh, Yellowstone National Park, nothing showing up here, but I'm wondering if, uh, let's go back over here to Yellowstone, see if we got any movement out here. A lot of times when we see uh, 
increasing activity here at the west coast level we'll see increasing movement inland but uh, doesn't look like it for now i got a tree branch here that's kind of screeching against the window it is really windy out we'll get to the weather forecast and blizzard warning here in northern california in just a minute uh, but yellowstone looks very quiet for now the rest of the country out here uh, typical zone seeing earthquake activity out there around the oil fields illinois seen a 2.0 near taylorville earlier this morning uh, iceland area uh, nothing nothing else showing up, up on the usgs map but let's go ahead and check out the uh, Iceland site. I'm hoping I can get through this update before the power flickers again because every time it does well the, the internet goes down. A little bit of activity up here across Slingerfell and the Hagafell region where we've last seen the eruptive activity take place. One earthquake down here underneath Grindavik. Um, so continue to watch that. Doesn't look like anything major has taken place overnight but again We've seen elevated conditions here in terms of earthquake movement well north here of this plate boundary, talking about around the North Pole and uh, further along the south here across the uh, divergent zones of the Atlantic Ocean. When we see that activity, obviously we're looking at some further uh, divergent activity across the region. And that includes Iceland, where it sits, where Iceland sits on the plate boundary. Uh, we'll continue to watch that as things remain somewhat elevated across the Atlantic. Uh, South America, a handful of smaller quakes. Uh, got a 4.4, looks like, coming in right now into the Fiji area. Fairly deep, 600 kilometers deep. We've been seeing a trend of earthquakes act out here uh, in the deeper levels here recently. That's further adding strain out here across the plate boundary. And the momentum travels here across this plate boundary. Got to keep an eye on that. Definitely seen a lot of deep movement here recently with really not a whole lot of larger scale activity. Uh, stretching across this plate boundary but i'm sure it's there uh, i'm almost certain that it's building to something a little bit bigger the question is where uh looking at the last let's go to the last seven days 4.5 and above you can see that momentum and pressure transfer here across the area we really haven't seen too much movement here across the kermadec trench we've seen a little deeper activity underneath uh, north island new zealand area i believe that's associated there with strain across the hikarangi subduction zone Got to keep an eye on that for sure. Uh, but there's, there's a couple areas out here that really haven't seen any movement here in the last week following all this deep activity. Of course, that's going to be the strain bends right here, Vanuatu southward, uh, potentially here across some of the Solomon Island regions as well. So keep an eye on that area for some further movement. We've got this deeper activity triggering, so uh, got to be on the... Uh, the uh, upside here in terms of realizing what can take place out here uh, again a lot of strain building in this region right now philippines decent swarm going on the fives and fours here started off yesterday uh, getting a little bit of variable depths here between 35 67 kilometers and some surface quakes so keep an eye on the philippine trench that does look quite active the kurokamachaka fairly quiet there today couple more earthquakes here just off the coast of Tokyo. Get a little swarm itself here. Uh, 5.1 and a 4.5 today. So still looking at increasing pressure out here across the area. Um, one region we really haven't seen a lot of earthquake activity uh, is up here, or I should say down here across the Izu Trench and the Mariana Trench region. Nothing showing up here in the last week. And that's a little odd. So, you know, this could be next in line here of some further movement. The pressure is there, that's for sure out here in the area hawaii a handful of smaller quakes really nothing major going on out there right now and um we'll just continue to watch that i want to cover uh let's do space weather real quick and then we'll get into the extreme weather out here in california uh we're saying goodbye to sunspot number 3590 it's been the source of uh, a few X flares and quite a few M flares as well. Does look quite dynamic still as it departs over on the northwestern limb of the sun. Uh, and we are left with a whole lot of disorganized activity out here. Really not expecting uh, at all too much of anything from these sunspots that are currently facing the Earth. Uh, overall threat right now still remains somewhat elevated. 99% chance for a C flare. M flare 50. X flare around 10%. And that is due to 3590 still being within the earth directed view no major wars in the forecast for now 
All right. We got a blizzard warning up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Not too often do we see blizzard conditions out here in Northern California, but uh, it's in the forecast. It's looked like, uh, well, they kind of spelt that wrong, right? Look at that. Weather.gov. I, I need to be a, uh, what are they called? Proofreader. I can spot these things a mile away. <laughs> All right. So Thursday, February 29th uh, through Sunday morning, March 3rd. <clears throat> Got some major snow coming in. The blizzard conditions are going to be Friday to Saturday morning. So we're talking about tomorrow night and into early Saturday morning. Up to 10 feet of snow coming in with some big time wind. Talking at least 65 miles per hour. Sometimes a little bit higher at the uh, higher peaks out there. There will be some snow down to about 2,000 feet. Um, and this is a major winter storm in terms of the impact to the mountain regions. You know, not a good time to be out traveling over Interstate 80 or 50 or going to Reno for the weekend. But more than likely, things are going to be closed down up there for sure. Um, you know, we're <laughs> road closures likely, down trees, tree branches, and extended power outages. Travel is highly discouraged. And, uh, you know, it's having i think they were saying about two to four inches of, of snowfall that was going to be their uh their rate per hour so four inches of snow an hour with 65 mile per hour winds that's a, a decent storm i would love to go up there and just experience it for once i've never been in a blizzard uh but i'm an extreme type of guy extreme weather guy and i like to experience all forms of weather and that is still on my bucket list but uh, unfortunately we can't do that right now got commitments here for school and of course kids right can't be taking the kids up there in the blizzards uh so yeah if you're up there uh in the sierra nevada mountains I, i'm sure you know what's coming big time big time weather uh here in the valley sacramento valley it's windy uh, we got a wind advisory right now, expecting winds around 55 miles per hour or so uh, through the afternoon and evening. Uh, that's why I'm going to leave the stream offline just for now. I will cover major updates, uh, but until the winds calm down, um, I got to leave the stream offline because we've been flickering a little bit here with the power. And every time it does that, it brings the stream down. I don't want to start it back up and have it go back down. There is our low pressure system out here. It's a massive area here. A lot of cold air, a lot of instability. Notice those little popcorn type clouds. This is going to bring the potential for some thunderstorms out here as well. There's the frontal boundary. You can see that well defined just now stretching into Northern California. We're getting the winds just ahead of it here, but uh, the big time wind will be back here tomorrow night, Friday and um, uh, Friday night into Saturday. So a decent amount of uh, snowfall coming in as well. Let me go back here to the uh, weather and show you guys the snowfall forecast. Look at that. Goodness. 96 inches up around the uh, this area right here in the white. That's a, Let me see if I can zoom that up a little bit. Blue Canyon area, Quincy. Quincy itself is going to get 36 to 48 inches. That's four feet of snow. That's pretty good. Um extreme impact according to the weather service here and uh, this event could last till at least through sunday here march 3rd back out of here real quick and show you guys the uh let's see here i want to go back there we go snow timeline here here's the uh timeline so to speak so today i got some rain heavy snow north of i-80 uh locally gusty winds 50 to 60 miles per hour over the sierra nevada snow level right now at about 4,000 to 5,000 feet that will drop with all this colder air coming down Even eventually maybe down to about a thousand a uh, thousand feet there so i'm talking about areas around grass valley and whatnot could be picking up some snow uh, but friday is the big day moderate to heavy rain heavy to extremely heavy snow and strong winds gusting 30 to 50 locally to 60 miles per hour or higher over the Sierra Nevada mountains. So Friday, Saturday, big time, big time travel delays. And again, there's that blizzard warning stretching. Uh, look at that. Even down into some of these. Uh, wow, that is a little crazy. Let me look at this again here. That is uh, stretching down to Jackson, Placerville, Auburn, Grass Valley. 
all those folks underneath uh, an extremely rare blizzard warning out here. That is crazy. Crazy. Extremely dangerous to impossible travel conditions with extended road closures likely. Yeah, I wouldn't be going out. I would be inside, get a nice fire going for the family, maybe break out some dominoes. I don't know if you guys are going to have power up there or not, but I'm sure a lot of people got generators. Uh, but yeah, be a good good night to stay inside and uh, enjoy the wind and snow. I, I would I would actually kind of be out there just to experience it a little bit. But uh, anyway, uh, we'll keep you guys updated. Keep you guys updated on any earthquake activity that pops off here today. I know the live stream won't be up, but uh, we'll get it back up as soon as the winds calm down. And I was looking at the windy map. Let me go back over here and see. Uh, this is 11 a.m. my time. As we head into the afternoon, things still kicking here with the arrival of that frontal boundary. And uh, it looks like there might be a little lull in the wind uh, tonight. So I may try to get that stream back up and running here. I'm just outside of Chico. The wind's, of course, going to be super high in the mountains all night. Uh, so I may bring the stream back up later this evening. And, uh, and then tomorrow we got more wind. But hopefully it's not as strong here in the valley. It looks like it will be. But uh, look at that. That's a lot of wind coming in here, folks. All right. I'm out of here. Stay safe. And uh, we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later. I will provide uh, updates should they become necessary. Take care, folks. Stay safe out there.